Hey folks, ACCG here, and in today's video, I'm covering a topping deck, which is delightful. Uh, team ACCG here, thanks to my mates for, for putting that down. Uh, we came ninth in the Glasgow 3-on-3, three, 3v3 three three, three cup. Is it a cup? Yeah, it's a cup. There you go. There you go. Uh, so I played Zoro. Uh, Adam played Ace, which definitely shook a few few tail feathers today, which was nice. Uh, and Joe played Katakuri with a list where he was running a bunch of 2Ks, which caught people off guard as well. Uh, and the only reason I'm doing a video is because the list is a little bit abnormal compared to your normal stuff. People either go very rushy or go very eventy. I've kind of just jammed them two together, uh, and it definitely helped with some of the more difficult matchups that Zoro faces into it. Now, I'm aware we're at the end of OPO3, but... Not a lot changes with Zoro going forward in the future, so it's still um, important that you're looking at how this meta is going to affect the next meta and how you're going to be able to adapt and stuff. So the basic stuff, uh, for Ezo, um, I, don't, I don't even really have to describe heavily about this. This is just the best searcher for Red right now. Like, it used to be Nami a lot, and I suppose that's fine, but while Marco is just as strong as it is, it just makes sense to run four of these. Uh, four Boogie, because we do run... 11 events i believe uh, and also this card is just absolutely bonkers the only downside of the buggy is the fact that it has no counter um but you just have to keep that in your mind and make sure that you're um thinking about how you can actually use your cards to protect yourself a bit earlier a bit later uh, and how this is going to affect you uh currently dad on because i like to be able to go uh top five let me search for any of my good cards in my deck because it's insane uh, four Marco, because it's broken. Uh, one four drop Marco. Some people are cutting this from the list, but because I've got so many white beard pirates uh, in the actual list, uh, it just makes sense to run the Marco. And it, it, I've built this deck specifically to play against um, white beard more than anything. Um, just being able to constantly have something down that's going to stick and be annoying is important. And also, uh, if you run into Kazakuri, it's really important that you have a, uh, a blocker so you can just say, nice. 10 k nice 12k big mama um but yeah laugh at this uh this is my favorite card in the entire deck haruta this card is absolutely insane right now um it's so fantastic against white beard and it just says uh on the marco turn you have to play marco to clear this and like that just ends up leaving yeah either your buggy up so you're just going to get free attacks um or you're just going to get free value from this the reason that this is important is because you can play your bodies down and on your turn two and still get a 6k swing with the zaro which is something that you just don't get to do a lot of the time especially if you're not building towards that matchup because you, you'll want to play a card for your tempo but then you've got a 5k leader and it's doing nothing and if you leave uh white beard alone for three turns without them having to discard a card or or force them to take the damage you just lost that game really haven't you so yeah this is fantastic just watch out for the marco uh try and play this on curve or one thing I did today is I played the, uh, saw my opponent play the Izo uh, and like side and missed the Marco. So then I played the Harata uh, turn two anyway, because I was like, this is fine. Um, this is safe. I'm still going to get value because the turn two, I'm able to get a body, forced it out, had a buggy out. So it was, again, that decision of buggy or uh, Haruta, Harata, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, three golden. This card's bonkers. Absolutely insane. I don't know if you've seen like Cross AI always harps on about this. Uh, and yeah, he's right too. Because just being able to go, um, okay, cool, I went second. Uh, Gordon Marco, one of your 6Ks. Okay, you had a nice game. Um, yeah, card's insane. Not only that, uh, Gordon into Fire Fist is just disgusting. Like, uh, pl playing against Katakuri with this, where you... you um, you Gordon, like one of the big moms alone, and then just be, being able to get rid of it is just absolutely insane. Gordon into Otama, into Marco is just also like minging, disgraceful. Uh, love this, Foster. Some people are trying the one off in it. Uh, literally saved my life today. Played against Whitebeard, um, and I think he thought I was going to go for game, and I was like, nah, I really have no need to because I'm just going to play two Foster down and watch you lose. Like, take an extra turn. Uh, you now have four cards in your hand. Go to five all you want, but you're never getting past these, and I'm really not afraid. Uh, it's also a white beard pirate, so you can grab it with the ESO if you really need it. Uh, and it's 1k, so that's why we run this over the chopper, because one, it's sessionable, two, it keeps you alive, and you have a lot of cards that don't have any counter. Two Magra, um, people have dropped this from the list, but I actually think it's quite critical, uh, especially just at the two, because being able to turn... Hmm, lovely noise. Being able to turn an ESO or um, a chopper just into 7k is really, really important. Um, especially in the YPF matchup, but in any matchup, just going six or seven with one card with a one down utilization, one down utilization is scary. Uh, and the reason that the Mago is important is because you can't always comfortably play the Makano, especially if your opponents are playing out like zero power things that they can just swing into it. Uh, low, loads of little small fellas, and you're just losing the 2k for like the additional attack, and that puts you in a scary position. But the Magara both helps you be aggressive and continues with the tempo of making sure that you're going to have attackers next turn. So that's what I like to do with that. Uh, four Makano is essential. Um, the amount of times where I've just went double Makano, uh, tap, tap, 
put them on something and then swing for like 9k and your opponent just crumbles. Uh, Otoma, 4 Otoma, um, again, essential. Um, just being able to go uh, Otoma on a, a Marco today so many times and just go, okay, swing for 4k, swing for 4k, swing for 4k. And then they reset it and it's 6 and then I go, okay, cool. Now I'll swing my bigger stuff into it and I'm just watching their hands dwindle while they're trying to keep this one card alive because they think it, it's critical to how they're going to win. Uh, 3 Jozu. Um, gonna shout out the Jozu? I am going to shout out the Jozu today because this is obviously just a 2k counter in Zoro. Uh, but I watched my teammate who in no way, shape or form should have won in an ace matchup against Zoro on Death's Door. Watched him go, uh, I pay for 4 for Jozu, tap 1 under, attack with 5. Oh, he got no counter, fantastic. I'll play a Jozu, attack with 5, and attack with ace for 6 and then won the game. Uh, and which definitely helped us get the Usopp in the end. So, um, yeah, this is effectively just a 2k counter that you can search with the Iso and the Whitebeard's Pirate, which we do run on this. But, um, yeah, make sure you know what this card does if you're playing against Ace. <laughs> Quite important, <laughs> right? You know, it's nice. Uh, yeah, just mention this Whitebeard Pirates. If you play a mirror match, uh, whoever plays Whitebeard Pirates and ensures that they get Marco wins the game. Um, it's fantastic because sometimes you don't want to just go buggy into one of the other events because it does nothing for you but being able to go buggy into a white beard pirate into something that's going to help you um keep driving the engine is really important uh, and it's also just another turn one target which makes your life easier for mulliganing um this event is insane fire fist uh some people are running four i think it's super get four i think you just need to see it once and that's always enough and um, there's some matchups where it just does next to nothing for you yeah three is fine especially because we can search it out because it's a white beard pirate so we can grab from Ezo. um you can't grab it from Whitebeard's Pirate because that's his character, but you can grab it from the Buggy as well. So it is what it is. Card's absolutely insane, um, especially with the Gordon and the Otama that we have in here. Which is classic stuff. Three guard point. Could be four. Some people are running more defensive events. I just don't think it's necessary right now. Like It comes too clunky because you want to be like very offensive. Um, but if you're someone who's patient, then sure, look at running more protective events. Like the, uh, what's the two cost one? Cost five. Red Hawk. Thank oh, yeah. you, Adam. Yeah, Red Hawk. People are running Red Hawk. Go for it if you want. I would just rather have these. Nine times out of ten, I'm actually discarding the guard point uh, for the Fire Fist because, like, whiteboard, because why would you need to defend if it's just not there anymore, right? Um, but it is actually super good against uh, Yellow Katakuri as well. So um, if I'm playing against Cat, I'll just drop this on the leader ability and sometimes they're like, oh crap, I actually expected that to go through. And in that matchup, you want to have life, baby. Speaking of having no life left, Fire Doll. Um, before going into it, I was like, oh, maybe I should cut this because it doesn't come up that much and it won me two games today because <laughs> they're like, I have two done and they're going, hmm, he's going to put Zoro up to eight. And then I go, oh, attack for 10 with Zoro. And they go, oh, um, yeah, it's good. It's obviously a brick in your hand early, but because we run an event that specifically wants you to discard events, it's literally a non-issue. Like, if you don't see yourself finding this to be critical for your game plan, ditch this for the Fire Fist. Um, but it's such a good card into so much of the meta right now, like just being able to catch people off guard. And also it just means that you're not gonna crumble under the pressure that is Whitebeard. Um, yeah, that's the deck list, nothing too special. Nice little thing. These are the swanky cool cool guy cards. Uh, and this is my first top for One Piece, which is nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm sure it won't be the last. Thanks everyone for watching and have a nice day, bye.